or Town of Brisk. Hi all and welcome back to my ongoing Let's Play of Sea of Stars. We are still in Brisk working our way through the arena. We've done silver and we are moving on to gold. So hopefully you'll stick around for that. And if you are, I would love it if you hit those like and subscribe buttons. And for those of you who just did, thank you very much. And for the rest of you, it's super cool to tag along for this adventure anyway, of course. And as per usual, when I am gaming, I will only be reading information and dialogue, nothing else. Let's do this. Arena Clerk, welcome to Dwellers Fall Arena. On these sands, the mighty gather, the mighty prevail, and the mighty has become legend. Will you be participating today? Yes. Please choose your rank. Gold rank. Beast, we made it to the gold rank. This is the last one. Valerian Sail, I would like you to by my side for this one. Of course. You got it, Beast. Haha, <laughs> let's go then. The arena, I'm ready. Cheesig, good day, people of Brisk and beyond. Welcome all to Dwellers Fall Arena. Here we are, the gold rank. Is there no stopping beast? Beast, beast, beast. This is awesome. And it's my birthday too! To kick off today's event from the scalding depths of Hill Mountain and unknown lands above, I give you big buggy and bad bunnies. Oh, I'm so ready! Now, now, let the fight begin!
Another win for Beast and his friends. No stopping now. And now for the next combatants from all around the world. Please welcome the basic basement batch. Woohoo! They don't have a healer. Now, now, let the fight begin.
beast has done it. You know what that means. No way. Is it really happening? Here we are, the gold rank finals. The time has come for Beast to face not only the gold champion, but the gold standard of champions. The one with unparalleled picks, unparalleled skill, and unparalleled charisma. Wait, if I lose my mind. Can our rising star defeat the undefeated one? We are about to find out. Join us now, champion champions, let the crowd speak your name. Sail gain, sail gain, sail gain! Amazing intro! Now, now, let the fight begin! Ultimate attack. 
Dr. Beast. Outstanding! They've done it! Soon Kane has been defeated! Beast! 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 I still like Soon Kane better. The time has come for our young group to face the ultimate challenge. They have what it takes. We shall see you next time. This concludes today's event. Congratulations, Beast! Special rank unlocked. The ultimate arena battle awaits. Here's your prize for completing the gold rank. Congratulations. Got Reaper's Mercy. While HP is above 50%, killing blows leave the target at 1 HP instead.
Oh, you found a new artifact. Let's see here. New story unlocked. Paradise Lost. Hey, want to hear a story? Yes. Paradise Lost. And Wilda was a fair leader who cared not for titles. Sources say that she spent equal time at Aventry Manor as she did in, in town with her people. Under her reign, Lucent knew prosperity and upheld its title as Bastion of Light like never before. By her side was Duke Aventry, a proud noble and fierce defender of his island, of his land and people. Ever stalwart, it is said that the flame of his dedication to Lucent burned only cooler than that of his fiery love for Willa. Despite the looming threat of the Clockwork Castle, they managed to keep their people safe, happy, and hopeful. One night, during a long journey abroad like so many others, Duke Aventry was awoken by an emissary carrying urgent orders. The Wilda demanded that he return to the scent at once, offering no explanation beyond hinting at some dire threat. When the Duke arrived, he was greeted by a raging firestorm. A sizable portion of the land was burning, but there were no enemy forces in sight. A sun solstice warrior had turned evil. Hiding somewhere on the island, he would come out once a day to deplete his powers, slowly burning away at the landscape. Thanks to the trail of conflagration, he was easily tracked. Their fight persisted for days on end, but for all his might, Duke Aventry was unable to defeat the evil solstice warrior. Seeing the collateral damage caused by their battle, he accepted that they were at a stalemate and retreated in retreated in order to avoid further destruction of his already bleeding land. Struck by despair in the face of his inability to protect his people, Duke Aemon to let his guard down, and in walked the enemy. Fleshmancer Acolyte II approached in disguise and offered him a magic shard. This Asian shard was made by the Ovates themselves, she lied, fully aware of Duke Aventry's weakened state of mind. It will shroud your island in complete darkness for one day, blocking all light from sun and moon. My enemy's power would, he mused. But, playing to Duke Aventry's sense of honor, two gave him the final nut. Solstice Warrior hasn't been playing by the rules either. Surely you wish to protect your people, she asked. Duke Aventry accepted the shard and thanked her for, their, for her help. Simply smashed the shard with conviction and its magical awake to explain on her way out. He wasted no time in smashing the shard and by voluntarily activating the curse on his island by blade right into the Acolyte's hands. Everything went fine at first. The Night Shroud covered the land and Duke Aventry made short work of the weak and Solstice Warrior. As celebration began, they put out a call for Wind Mage to gather waves strong enough to flood the eastern part of the island. The flames were extinguished at last, but in doing so those areas were transformed into the famous swamps we know today. It was a change welcomed by all, for it came hand in hand with their victory. It took a few weeks until it became clear to all that the Night Shroud would never recede. Despite overwhelming support from his people, Duke Aventry could not forgive himself for his mistake. Finally realizing who had really given him the magic shard, he departed for the Clockwork Castle. On that day, Duke Aventry played into the Acolyte's hands for the second time. While he was away, Fleshmancer Acolyte III infiltrated Aventry Manor and killed the Wilda. Thus was the ritual completed, and a seed of evil was planted in the magic which few centuries later would grow into the Dweller of Woe. Completely defeated over the following days, Duke Aventry died of sadness and despair. As if fate hadn't been cruel enough, over 200 years later, Romaya found his urn and raised him from the dead to be her bodyguard. For decades, the Duke roamed the swamps and once ruled over, his memory completely gone, feeling nothing save for an unexplainable sadness. In bouts of clarity, he would feel a brief but very deep yearning for something he just couldn't put his finger on. Such was the Duke's lot for half a century until one day young Solstice warriors reclaimed Wilda's locket and brought it to him. His memory now restored, Duke Aventry smashed the locket and in doing so broke the tether binding his soul to the material plane. At long last he found peace and was free to leave this world. The end. Shima Dunlop, well read too. Listen to all of the campfire stories.
And I think this might be the perfect place to end off this part. In the next one, we will head back to the arena and see what lies in store for us there. See you then. Thank you all for following along in my Sea of Stars Let's Play. I hope you're having as good of a time as I am. If you are, I would love to hit those like, subscribe buttons. And if I saw you again in the next part. But for now, it is time to say bye bye.